Hi, I'm Chris Cravens, your guide for this Intro to Enameling journey. If you haven't watched the first video, the Intro to Enameling Overview, please take a look at it. I get into um, the tools that you'll need, some basics, and some concepts that are going to be important for this. In this video, we are going to learn a technique called dry sifting. Dry sifting is used for as a foundation for a lot of enameling. So it's a skill that you'll want to test out and develop uh, in your own toolbox, as it were. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. First thing you're going to need is a few tools. This is a one inch round piece of copper. 18 gauge, your enamel, a spatula, and a palette knife, plus the sifter. You'll also need something if you're not comfortable with holding the metal piece in your fingers to enamel to lift it up off the surface. Here I've just used another sifter turned upside down, a stack of pennies, um, or a small container will also work. You just need to be able to get your fingers under the edges. As an enamel artist, one of the things that you're going to need to know about um, is something called the coefficient of expansion. As you develop your skills and make more pieces, you'll be able to dig into this a little bit more, but for now, in a nutshell, what it is, is understanding that metal and glass expand and contract at different rates when they're heating and heated or cooled. Because of this, we run the risk of cracking the enamel if we don't do something called counter enameling, which is basically placing um, the same number of layers of glass on the back of a piece as we do on the front. As you begin developing your skills, um, and like I said, experiment some more and learn more about the coefficient of expansion, you will begin to understand that yes, you can use thicker, uh, thicker metal, smaller sizes, different layers of enamel to avoid counter enamel. But for now, let's just keep it simple and always counter enamel. For counter enameling this piece, um, I'm just going to use some of my nut brown enamel. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and turn um, one of my sifters upside down and set this on. Use my spatula to remove some grains of enamel from my jar and fill the sifter about halfway full. Now that the sifter is ready, we're going to go over and apply it to the copper. To do this, there's a couple of different ways. You can use your finger and lightly tap, or run your fingernail along the wires. The goal here is to develop a nice even coat of enamel that you can't see the metal through, but it isn't too thick. If you'll notice, I started around the outside edges first and then moved towards the middle. This is important because glass always wants to form a ball, so it will want to pull away from the edges, so having a little bit more there will help combat that. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to use a spatula, place it under my enameled piece, and then lift it and place it onto the trivet. Now we're ready for firing. Now we're ready to begin enameling. There are a few pieces of equipment you'll need for this step. You'll need your trivet with your enameled piece, firing screen, the tripod, the spatula, and a torch. Here I'm using a Smith Air acetylene with the number two tip. I like to use safety glasses when I'm firing just to protect my eyes, another layer of protection. These are um, number three green and they're good for keeping that bright flash um, and infrared light from the torches and also from the kilns from damaging your eyes. I also have a fume extractor that I like to use to pull the gas off as well as fumes from the enamel as it melts. 
I'm not going to use this today in the video so you can hear me, but it is on all the other times I'm using my torch. Something else to keep in mind as you're firing is to have a nice surface that is fireproof underneath where you're going to be doing your work. Here I have a very large cookie sheet um, that I have my piece setting on. After you're finished um, placing the enamel piece on the trivet, you can put it on top of the firing screen and I'm going to go down here and you can look from the side and see how it's sitting on this trivet. You want to make sure that the piece is evenly um, set up so you don't want it to be like at an angle like this or um, cockeyed as my dad would say. Uh, want it nice, level, and flat. Um, you can also see by looking at my piece here how the edges are just a little bit higher than the center in the um, layer of enamel that I placed. Now we're getting ready to fire this piece. You want to make sure that if you have long hair, you've pulled it back in a ponytail. You don't want to wear any loose clothing or jackets, especially like fleece or anything that isn't natural material. I usually wear a cotton t-shirt or um, wool in the workshop. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy. And now let's get started. I've actually switched my torch tip out from um, a number two to a number three just to get a little bit more heat going uh, for the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and light this torch. So turn on the gas and then use the little striker. There we go. I'm gonna turn it back a little bit and so I've got a nice warm flame there. And I'm gonna head up underneath of the piece and begin heating it from below. What I'm watching for right now is for the enamel to um, start to melt. It actually goes through about three different stages. The first one is called the sugar coat. Um, when those grains begin to melt, you'll start to see them separate, um, but they aren't flowing yet. So we're actually right about there now. So the powdery look is gone. They're starting to get a little glassy, but you can still see the individual grains. The next stage is called orange peel, and it's just like it sounds. <laughs> the grains begin to melt down and spread out more, and the surface starts to look like an orange peel. If you're not um, getting enough heat on the piece to melt, you can bring the flame up a little bit closer to the bottom of the trivet. Some other things that can help too if, if the heat isn't flowing enough is to move the trivet out to a corner. You want to make sure that you've got a counterbalance on your screen for that. Some people will even put a cutout can on top or above the trivet to hold in heat. Now we're starting to move um, from that sugar coat stage into the orange peel stage. You can see that the enamel is starting to flow. Notice how around the edges it's turning a little bit brown. Um, this color can be a little particular with the flame. Okay, so now we've passed through orange peel and I'm seeing a nice glossy even finish to the enamel. So we're done. Turn the torch off and let this cool. After the piece has cooled a little bit, you can go ahead and um, remove it from the trivet with your uh, palette knife and just set it off to the side. Um, I like to just set it on the mesh screen off in a corner. Uh, one, a couple of things about this uh, process, you don't want to quench the enamel, like put it in water or anything, it will crack. Um, this is still extremely hot. Uh, if you set it on a, a cooler metal surface, you do run the risk of it cracking. Because we're going to be doing some more enameling, it's not a huge deal, but when you get to that final fire, definitely um, want to watch where you're, uh, how fast you're cooling your enamel. 
Now that we've fired our piece, we're going to go ahead and clean the other side to prepare it for enameling. Before we do, I want to show you the different um, stages that the enamel fires at. This is the sugar coat stage. Um, like I had mentioned, you can see the individual grains of the enamel. This isn't going anywhere. These are stuck on here really well. Um, this can actually be an interesting way to fire your enamels. Um, it kind of feels like sandpaper a little bit, um, and it's a matte finish. The second one is orange peel. Um, you can see how there's definite areas where the grains haven't spread to fill and cover the enamel. I'm sorry, the metal. And so it looks like an orange peel. It's got layers and little pits in it. Um, this can also be an interesting way to fire your enamels depending on the piece that you're designing. And then this final piece is a single glossy layer. There's no pits or holes. Um, it still is a little bit wavy and the reason for this is that I just didn't heat it long enough. I'm not too worried about this because this is the counter enamel side. This side is going to get really ugly <laughs> by the end of firing, especially because we're using a torch. So um, I had mentioned earlier that this color, this is the nut brown, does react with the gas, um, in my case acetylene, and so it develops these um, darker areas where it's been in contact with it. I actually like the way this looks so this is why one of the reasons why I selected this color um, and you'll you'll see in the final results how how it turns out it just adds some depth. So for cleaning your pieces you're gonna need a couple um, bits pieces of material so you're gonna need some water. Um, I really I like to do this uh, in a sink but because we're in the studio and for video, <laughs> I'm just using a little glass bowl here. This is an old Pyrex bowl uh, filled with tap water. You'll need Penny Bright um, or, a, well, Penny Bright and a little um, 3M Scotch pad. This is just a little scouring pad with no soap or anything added. Um, if you don't want to do this, you can use pickle instead and drop it in your pickle pot. Just keep an eye on your enamel to see if it reacts with the color. So on the back side of this piece, um, you'll see some copper oxides which have risen to the surface as fire scale. Uh, and it does the same thing underneath the color as well. Um, and we'll show a little bit more of that when we get to firing some transparent so you can really see it. So to clean this piece, we're gonna open up the Penny Bright. I like to um, dip the sponge in uh, just a little bit of water like this and uh, moisten the Penny Bright, dip the piece, and then put the Penny Bright on nice layer of it and let it sit for a little bit. This sponge does have some scrubability to it. Um, I just find the 3M pad works better so I'm just gonna let that sit and soak for a minute. This is a citric acid based product um, so you don't have to worry about gloves um, unless you you know want to if you find that your skin has a reaction to it you can do that so now I'm using the little scouring pad and I'm just basically scrubbing off the fire scale that is present on the piece that on the side that we're going to enamel this just takes a little bit of elbow grease if it's not going anywhere like if you are like man I am giving it all I got with my elbow grease and it's not moving you can put more penny bright on it and just let it sit for a little bit longer I also like to go around the outside edge a little bit um, just to clean it up uh, what can happen when you're firing if you do have any fire scale left is um, it can flake off and jump onto the piece you're onto the side you're firing and get bits of pieces of fire scale um, in your work. If you're going to be doing transparent enamel, 
take your scouring pad and just sort of do some little circles like this just to give it a nice um, even look to the surface. You're just basically putting layers of scratches in there instead of like all the scratches running one way. Um, this usually doesn't show up underneath the transparent enamel, but it can. So I like to just give it a fighting chance and make it look as good as possible. So now that this is finished, um, you just want to dry your piece off with some paper towels. So I'm going to reach over here and grab one. Uh, I usually just use these little half sheets and I tear them down even further into quarter sheets because I like to save um, as much as I can. You can also use a, you know, a, a towel, like a shop towel, terry towel, whatever. I usually just dry them off and then I lay this out to dry and use it again later. All right. Now that my the back of my piece is cleaned up and the fire scale has been removed, uh, there's a little trick to help with the remaining enameling work. So if you look at a trivet, you'll see that there are points of contact that the piece will have. And the enamel is going to melt. So our goal would be to give this piece <laughs> the best chance of success to not have the enamel melt and stick to the trivet. Um, as I'm looking at this, I can see some areas where the enamel is likely to melt because it's on a little bit thick. So one of the things that you can do is to grind the edge, the, the top edge here down just a little bit. So there's a couple of ways to do that. If you have a flex shaft, you can use, um, this is a sanding drum, and just run along the edge like this. Make sure that you're wearing a dust mask because this is silica glass and it makes a lot of gross dust you don't want to be breathing in. So you can grind this edge down with sandpaper. You can use, you can use a piece of sandpaper and do it, or you can use the alundum stone. So um, what you want to do to use an alundum stone is dampen your piece like this. Um, when I am in my, uh, when I'm at my sink, um, I have a nice board that I lay over the top. Um, this is a little two by four that I can lay a piece on to give it a nice surface to work on. Um, and I have a bucket that sits underneath of it. You don't want to dump this stuff down your drain because again, it's glass. So as you're grinding the glass, um, it's not something you want in your septic system or, you know, the city sewer. So basically what I do is I, I have this bucket that it develops a sludge and when it gets, you know, half an inch or an inch deep, I just set it out outside in the sun to dry and then um, I'll dispose of it then. So um, dip the piece in water, hold your London stone, and then just start going like this around the outside edge. So you can see how I am basically erasing the enamel from the very edge of this piece now. Dip it in water a little bit more just to give it some tooth. And so I'm going to give you a little side view so you can see this better. Find a flatter spot on my <laughs> alundum stone. Like I said earlier, these things get pretty creepy looking. So um, to show you better, I've got the piece at about a 45 degree angle. So that's what I'm creating. I'm creating that angle in the enamel around the edge of the piece. And exposing a little bit more of the metal. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect on this side. This is the back. Um, the way that I have these pieces set up for these projects um, is with no holes, so you can end up setting them into silver. I'm going to show you some other ideas here in a minute that you can do for your pieces.
this looks like it's ready to fire now. So there's a nice clean metal edge that's not going to um, sit on the trivet and get enamel on there. Okay, we are ready to start enameling. I have set up two of my colors here for this first layer of enamel. I've got the 1030 white and 1125 nut brown ready to go. Um, just like I did earlier, I filled uh, the sifters up halfway full. Here I'm using two just to make it a little easier on myself if you only have one sifter. That's totally fine. Just um, do this one step at a time. You'll need your trivet handy. So I'm just going to set it right here and had to find it. <laughs> Palette knife to lift this. Um, if you're using something to raise your enamel piece up, um, you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and use my fingers. So what we're going to do for this, um, this first exercise is going to teach you about um, just base layers of enameling and uh, graining. So I'm going to use the 1030 white and just cover half of the circle. I'm going around the outside edges of where I want this color to be doing about the same thickness that I did on the counter enamel. And then I'm going to pick up the nut brown. And now I'm going to do another half, but still leave a blank spot. So basically we're creating pie shapes here. So I'm gonna walk over like this. With the enamel. Now I'm ready to set this piece on the trivet. So I'm going to use my spatula, pick it up off my fingers very carefully. This back side is a lot slicker than it was before because it has enamel on it. And I'm going to set it in like that. Um, one of the things that I did not show you earlier that I'm going to show you now is cleanup. So because I have used catch papers here, I'm able to save the enamel. Um, this, this sheet doesn't look like it has cross contamination. There's no white. So I'm going to go ahead and empty my little sifter out. Um, I'm tapping it and then I also tap it underneath the table just for a little extra measure to clean out the sifter and then I'm picking up this piece of paper folding it and just shaking the enamel in I use these papers over and over again so I just kind of wipe them on my pants or um, apron um, and lay them back down this one uh oh has some brown on it so um, when I'm working normally in my space, I spread these out a little bit further and I work in the center of them, but uh, it's kind of hard to do on this little small scale video here. So I don't want to dump this into my clean white enamel. So I have a jar that I saved for specifically for counter enamel. And this is like all the colors I've ever used. <laughs> so. I'll take this paper, dump it on in there, just like that, clean my paper off on my leg. <laughs> and then um, I just put the lid on and give this a good shake. And now this is ready to use for counter enamel. I love, I actually love the way my counter enamel work uh, looks when I fire with it. So a lot of times I'll even leave it on pieces and cut out, you know, if I'm mounting them, I'll cut out the back so you can see a little bit of it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and fire our first layer of enamel. So I'm going to light my torch. Place the flame underneath just like we did before. Get ready to watch the magic happen. 
I'm watching for the exact same thing that we did before, the enamel to go through its um, melting steps of the sugar coat, the orange peel, and finally that glassy finish. If you're working with a, thin a thinner piece of metal, um, your enamel will melt faster, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, again, this is an 18 gauge piece of copper, so it takes a lot of heat. I usually work with the kiln, <laughs> so this is an experiment in progress. Um, as you can see, the section that we left bare is turning black. Those are the copper oxides rising to the surface there. We're going to clean that up when we're finished. The other enamel is now melting. Getting to that orange peel stage. actually peeking from the side to see how glassy it looks. Sometimes it's hard to see. I think we have a nice glassy finish now. So I'm going to turn the torch off. Let this cool down about 10 seconds or so. And hopefully, fingers crossed, lift it right off the trivet because no enamel has stuck. Oh, we got a little bit of sticking there, but that's okay. It came off. I do want to say that if you do end up getting um, a piece stuck to the trivet, so let's say that this, you know, metal piece was just sticking really bad, you can take your um, palette knife and just gently tap. A lot of times that'll uh, loosen it up. If it doesn't, let it cool down a little bit more. Um, you can use your tongs and pick up the trivet and you know bang the bottom of it against the uh, against your fireproof surface um, to loosen that piece up. A lot of times that'll pop it loose, but you want it to be more cool because it can go flying. So you don't want it to land somewhere else that it you know could cause a problem or land on you. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cool down, and then we're gonna go back to cleaning it up. When your piece is cool enough to handle, you want to go ahead and go through the process to clean it up using Penny Bright. Um, this is the little spot that we didn't have enamel on, so we're going to clean that up and clean up the edges. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the back here. So remember how I said that the gas can discolor the enamel? This is nut brown after one firing on the top, and you'll see we've got that edge around, we've got a little bit on the white. Look at the nut brown now on the back where the acetylene was hitting it the whole time. It's all dark like it was just the little edge here. So um, that can be a pro, it can be a con when you're using the torch. Um, and we'll take some experimentation to just, you know, play around with it, um, see what colors react, or just plan your design to take advantage of that color um, the color darkening. Sometimes it can work really well, especially if you um, like that more rustic look. So here I am with the elbow grease cleaning again. <laughs> this is the last time we'll really need to be doing this. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and go around the edges just a little bit. those up as well. Um, I do want to show you this up close here. So I'm going to dip this in the water and clean it off just a bit and dry it. So there's a couple of things going on with this piece of enamel I want you to see. So um, 
here around the edges it looks like it might be fire scale like right so oh wait that's darker than the clean copper this is actually little grains of enamel that have fired onto the surface just from the sifting process so if we if we would reverse back in the video well we would see actually some little grains of white and brown um, in this spot so when you're sifting this is kind of a uh, again it can be a pro or con depending on your design you do run the risk of getting enamel in places that you don't necessarily want it so if we wanted to keep this area perfectly clean with no um no enamel whatsoever we could have used a like a paper towel or something and laid it down as a stencil to prevent the enamel from landing there so just sift right over the paper towel and then you just lift it off when you're done and it picks up whatever enamel fell on the towel I personally like this and you'll see why in a moment <laughs> so now we're gonna go ahead and add our top layer of enamel now we're getting ready to sift on the last layer of enamel before we get started I'd like you to just take a minute and take a closer look at the piece that you fired the two colors on together I want you to pay close attention to the the grains that you see if you remember when I um, enameled this piece I put the white down and then the nut brown so you can see where the grains from the nut brown are very cleanly visible in the white here this is just an effect that occurs when you sift two colors on at the same time the enamel holds its um, structure and you can see that it doesn't mix like you might expect a watercolor to this can be a really neat design feature depending on the colors that you're using. To get ready to sift on the second coat here, um, we're going to go ahead and use the nitric blue. You want to make sure that you have your trivet handy and um, your palette knife so you can easily move the piece from your fingers or if you're using something to hold it off the paper just to lift it. I went ahead and used my spatula to scoop up some enamel and put it into the um, sifter. Again, halfway full. And now what I'm going to do is sift the blue over this area that wasn't enameled and over my two colors. And I've decided to just leave half of this um, piece unenameled just so that you can see um, the examples of colors here. Okay, now that this is ready, I'm going to go ahead and place it on the trivet and then we'll fire the piece. We're ready to begin firing again, so I'm going to go ahead and light the torch. And place it underneath just like before and we're gonna start to watch for the enamel to do its thing and melt
just reached sugar coat. Sugar coat stage. It's really easy to see it with the transparent, that nitrate. Soon we'll see the orange peel stage. One additional thing that I want to talk about um, now with using the transparents. When we worked with the um, opaque colors, basically just watched for the enamel to get that nice glossy sheen and we were done. When you're working with transparents, especially over bare metal, you're going to need to do something to burn the oxides off underneath the glass. So it'll require a little bit extra heat. And we're actually going to watch for that metal to start glowing red underneath the color. We just want to give it the time it needs to burn off as much of that as possible. It will still won't be clear like if we fired this blue over silver we'd see an entirely different result because of the underlying metal. With the copper underneath there's always going to be a pink cast to what the uh, end result is. But we can at least burn out as much as possible of the oxides. Should start to see this happen soon. This takes a little longer with the a torch than it does with the kiln just because of the heat escaping. And I'd say we're just about there. So I'm going to turn the torch off and we're going to let this piece cool. After your piece is cool enough to handle, you're now ready to do the final uh, the final cleanup. I like to use the a London stone just around the outside edges to remove any remaining fire scale and bits of enamel that are on the side. So to do that, I'm going to do just like I did before. Dip the piece in and then use the London stone just to lightly scrub the outside edge. If you have a flex shaft machine, you can also use um, Kratex medium wheels, silicone polishers, even the heatless Mizzy wheels to do this job. I wouldn't use the sanding drum just simply because it leaves the surface of the it leaves the surface a little rough, where all three of the other tools I mentioned leave it nice and smooth. But it's just as easy to do it by hand <laughs> and you don't get all the dust again if you do decide to use the um, flex shaft you definitely want to wear a mask while you're doing this with the water you don't have to worry so much okay Oop. see this black right here that is um, that's actually enamel on the side so let's work on that just a little bit more Just want to use a paper towel and now your enamel piece is ready to put into a setting of your choice as I mentioned earlier as an enamel artist you're one of the things that you're always going to be working with and against is the coefficient of expansion there are a couple of things that we can do um, to our metal to 
help prevent or reduce the risk of um, the enamel cracking. And one of them is to dome the piece that we're working with. To do this, you could use a dapping block and a punch. Um, you wanna anneal and clean your metal first. So this copper has been annealed. If you don't know what that is, um, it's heating it up enough to soften the metal. Uh, an easy way to do this is just to mark it with a Sharpie and heat it up until the Sharpie, Sharpie mark almost disappears. Place the metal inside the dapping block, add your punch, and then use a hammer. to dome out the piece. Now that this is domed, however, the enamel, if you sift it on dry, um, has a habit of rolling off the edges. So what you can do to help it stick better is to use a mixture of 50% clear fire to 50% water, so half and half. Um, and spray it on. So I'm going to um, actually take this off camera uh, to do this. You just want a nice light even spray. You don't want to load it up so much that the water is like piling up on it. Um, but you don't want to have too little where you've got dry spots. So right here it's just about right. And you would follow the same process with enameling. So You'd apply it around the outside edge and then move towards the middle for a little bit thinner application in the center. But the secret here is to let this dry completely before trying to fire it. If there's, uh, you can look at the top of the enamel, it will appear dry. And even then, it still may be wet underneath. So what I like to do is let this sit for at least 10 minutes um, in room temperature air. Uh, if you have a kiln, you can set it on the top to help speed up the process. You can also use um, like a little coffee warming plate and just set your metal on the trivet with the enamel on it and set it on there to warm up, uh, warm it up and dry it quicker. If you do fire something while it's still wet, what will happen is as the heat rises, this liquid will evaporate and basically form steam, which will push up through the enamel and create holes and gaps. It can even blow the enamel off of the piece. So you wanna be careful if you are working with any kind of wet medium to, um, to hold your enamel in place. If you're not interested in um, setting an enameled piece into a, like a bezel setting or prong setting and you just want to be able to hang it um, with a jump ring onto a chain there's a uh, what you want to do is actually put the hole in before you do the enameling so um, for example I can just use some hole punchers add the hole to the metal by squeezing these you want to clean up the back side so that it's a nice even um, layer. If you have bubbles of metal, that can impact your enameling and um, cause it to crack. <laughs> Everything can cause enamel to crack, so <laughs> you got to be careful with it. So that's something else that you can do um, in lieu of, you know, trying to set this or wire wrap it completely.